Hi, this is Kenji Lopez Alta. I'm here at my restaurant, Worst Hall. Um, it's a little bit slower than the average night. Um, like many restaurants uh, and many businesses, um, we are largely closed right now. We're open for takeout business only, um, uh, contact-free takeout. Um, <clears throat> When this transition was happening, and uh, and even before that, um, you know, I was very much concerned, as everyone is, about the safety of my employees, about um, how this virus spreads, um, about the best ways to keep people safe, um, including my family. You know, I have a young daughter, um, I have two senior parents, um, so I really wanted to get the best information out there. Um, so to that end, I um, I did a, a whole lot of research um, in scientific journals, scientific papers, uh, newspapers, um, recommendations from health organizations around the world, um, as well as um, extensive conversations with um, an epidemiologist, a virologist, and a uh, food safety expert. All the information that I have right now is about as up-to-date as it can be. Um, that said, the coronavirus is a new virus, um, and we're constantly ne learning new things about it. Um, so um, some of this stuff might eventually be outdated. Um, and if it is, I'll, make a, I'll, I'll be sure to leave a comment um, in the description. What are the most important things I could be doing to stay safe? Uh, social distancing is by far the most important thing you should be doing right now. Um, this is a respiratory virus, which means that it's trans transmitted by droplets or aerosolized uh, spit and mucus um, that carries a viral load. Um, and that can hang out in the air for several hours, in fact. Um, so the best way to ensure that you don't pick up, this uh, pick up the virus is by not coming into proximity with anyone else. The next most important thing you should be doing is just practicing good general hygiene. So keeping your house clean, keeping surfaces clean, uh, washing your hands frequently uh, with soap. Importantly, not touching your face or touching your face as little as possible. Um, if you have to scratch your face, rub your eyes, something like that, make sure you wash your hands carefully with soap before you do that uh, because you don't want to accidentally pick up a viral load from some surface and then get it into, you, um, into your nose or your mouth or your eyes. Does my face have any specific hot zones? Um, so when I say hot zones, I mean places that you're more likely to get the virus um, into your system if you touch it. Um, the answer is yes. Um, the main place you want to avoid touching is your nose, so stop picking your nose. Um, follow, following after that, um, your eyes and your mouth. Um, the chances that you're going to get it from your eyes and the mouth um, are much lower, although recently there have been reports of uh, conjunctivitis um, related to the coronavirus, so it is quite possible that um, you can get an infection through your eyes, um, but the nose is the one that we know is the main, uh, is the main place to avoid. Um, but again, you should be avoiding touching your face at all um, as much as you can, and certainly washing your hands before you touch your face. How does the coronavirus get spread? Well, it's a respiratory virus, um, so the primary way in which it gets spread is by uh, droplet in infection. So you breathing out or coughing or sneezing, um, putting moist droplets that are loaded with the virus into the air, and then someone else coming by um, and inhaling those. Um, and that's why we recommend, um, that's why everybody has been recommending social uh, distancing so that you don't breathe in other people's air. Are there any other ways that it could be spread? There are a couple other theorized ways that it could potentially be spread. Um, one of them is through contact, um, fomite transmission. So if somebody, say, sneezes onto a table and then you touch that table, um, you pick up some of the virus on your hand, uh, and then you touch your face, uh, you touch your nose or your eyes or your mouth, um, it's possible that you could then get infected through that method, um, although it is much less likely to, that you're going to be infected that way than just direct droplet uh, inhalation. Um, another possible route is fecal oral or fecal respiratory. Uh, so that's when um, the infected feces of a human. Um, so far, we've, we've found that about 50% of people have viral RNA um, in their stool, and we've um, produced viable virus out of that. Um, so it is possible that, um, you know, a restaurant worker with very poor hygiene um, or someone in your home that didn't wash their hands could potentially um, spread some amount of fecal matter onto food or onto your hands uh, and that you could then ingest it. And even if you do ingest a little bit of it, um, it's probably not going to get, get, you, um, get you sick, um, at least not from coronavirus. Can I get the coronavirus by touching or eating food? So far, there have been no known cases of uh, foodborne transmission or food packaging related transmission. Um, that is not to say that it's completely out of the question. Um, there is definitely the chance that you could get it, but thus far, there have been no known cases. Um, and according to all of the experts I spoke to, uh, the chances of getting it from eating food or handling food or food packaging um, are extremely are extremely slim, uh, especially if you practice good hygiene um, while you're preparing and eating your food. Is it safe to eat raw foods? Uh, this was a question that I specifically asked um, a number of experts on um, whether it was safe to eat, say, salads or fish, uh, you know, sushi or anything that you would normally eat raw. Um, is it less safe to eat that now? Um, 
The answers I got were, it's probably very safe, just as safe now to eat those raw foods as it was before. Um, even if a worker were to say, sneeze right in your salad bowl, toss it, put it on your plate and hand it to you, um, the chances that you are going to get infected from that salad um, are very, very slim. Um, uh, as we know, it's a respiratory virus. So unless you're taking that lettuce, shaking it around in the air, getting droplets in the air and then inhaling those, um, the chances that you're actually gonna get it from eating that lettuce are slim. Um, your mouth contains proteolytic enzymes, uh, your saliva contains, contains proteolytic, proteolytic enzymes, um, which break down proteins kind of indiscriminately. Um, and that includes uh, the membrane around uh, the coronavirus. Um, your gastrointestinal system is also a different system from your respiratory system. Um, you share a little bit of it, share a little bit of the same tube in the back of your throat. Um, but if you're swallowing and you're actively eating, um, the chance that a viral load gets deposited there um, and that that load is enough uh, to then subsequently get you infected, um, I am told is very, very slim. So you are probably safe even eating raw foods. How long does the coronavirus last on various surfaces? The coronavirus can last for three days or so on plastic and steel, um, about 24 hours on more porous surfaces like cardboard, um, four hours on copper, um, and in the air, in aerosolized form, it, we know that it can last a minimum of three hours. Um, we don't really know exactly how long it can last, but um, projecting the graph, uh, it looks like it's probably about six to eight hours or so uh, in aerosolized form. Does heating destroy the virus? Uh, the short answer is yes, heating does destroy the virus. So if you're still nervous about eating raw foods, um, and that's totally understandable, um, a surefire way to make sure that the food you're about to put in your mouth is virus free is by cooking it and heating it. Um, what we do know is that 149 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is about 65 degrees Celsius, at that temperature and higher, it takes about three minutes to completely make sure that uh, the food is going to be virus free. So if you're heating up, if you're heating up liquid foods like soup, um, make sure that they come to a simmer, let them simmer for three minutes uh, and it'll be safe. If you're heating up solid foods, uh, use a thermometer um, and make sure that it comes up to 149 degrees Fahrenheit or higher um, and that it maintains that temperature for three minutes minutes before you eat it, um, and that's um, a pretty good guarantee that it's going to be virus free. What is the safest way to shop at the supermarket? Well, supermarkets can be a little bit dangerous because uh, they tend to be crowded and because lots of people pass through them, especially larger supermarkets. Um, so when you go to a supermarket, you as much as possible want to avoid uh, getting in people's space, getting in spaces that were recently occupied by other people. Um, what that means is I would recommend using the self-checkout lane instead of going to um, a physical cashier, um, a real person, um, because the virus, again, is primarily spread through person-to-person -person droplet infec infection, um, not through touching things. So even if a lot of people have touched that touch screen, uh, the chances that you're gonna pick up the virus um, or, or get sick from touching that touch screen um, are very, very slim, um, especially if you wash your hands carefully before you bring them near your face. Um, so I would recommend using the, um, the self-checkout lane if possible, um, using cash-free payment systems um, or cardless payment systems are even better. So everyone's phone these days um, probably has a card, uh, touch-free, um, option. Um, if not, you can use a credit card, um, just wash your hands well, and t try to avoid cash if you can. If you're forced to, um, again, just make sure you wash your hands well before you touch your face. Um, the other thing that I would recommend is checking out smaller local markets as opposed to the big supermarkets, um, because basically the more number of people that pass through a space, um, the higher the odds that an infected person will have passed through that space and left um, a viral load somewhere in it. Um, so the fewer the people in, that pass through the doorway of the supermarket, the better. So I like to shop in smaller local shops. And I've found actually that the selection at those shops tends to be better these days um, than the large supermarkets where a lot of these people who are hoarding food um, go shopping. Um, and of course, you're also gonna be helping your local community um, and small businesses are really hurting right now. So they will definitely appreciate your business. Is it safer to use paper, plastic, or your own shopping bag? Bags. The truth is uh, every expert I talked about this has said they're all just about the same level of safety, which is very safe. Um, plastic bags and paper bags are made in factories and they're shipped to supermarkets. Um, they take a long time before they're actually used. Um, and we know that the virus only lasts about three days on plastic surfaces, one day on paper surfaces. Um, so chances are that amount of time has a lot. You're not getting farm fresh plastic or paper bags. Um, so the, vir the, the virus is not gonna be on those bags when they get to the store. Um, so the only real way that you could possibly get infected by them is if say um, the person bagging your groceries uh, blows into the bag or sneezes near the bags. Um, as far as using 
using your own bags go. Um, using a cloth bag is actually safer than using a plastic bag. A little bit safer, both of them are pretty safe. Um, cloth is a little bit safer only because you can wash it uh, in the washing machine and detergents and soaps are actually very good um, at destroying this virus. Should I be using hand sanitizer? Well, the good news is you don't really have to go crazy with the hand sanitizer, um, especially if you're at home. Um, soap is going to be just as effective. Um, soap is designed to break down fats, uh, lipids, and this is a lipid coated membrane. There is a lipid membrane around this virus, um, so that gets broken down very easily by soap. Um, so soap is the best way to wash your hands at home. Um, use cool water, uh, just because hot water, if you repeatedly wash your hands with hot water, it's gonna lead to more sort of, um, dry hands and more irritated skin. Um, so you're gonna, you're gonna find that it's easier to use cool water if you're frequently washing your hands. Um, the time I would recommend uh, getting at least a small bottle of sanitizer or maybe getting some sanitizing wipes is for when you go out. So say you go to the supermarket, you go to another store, um, you're coming back, you've touched some things. Um, before you touch your car door handle or before you touch your front doorknob, um, just give yourself a good wipe with the sanitizer to make sure that you're not depositing any virus onto those surfaces that other people might subsequently be touching. Is it okay to buy produce from open bins? Yes, it is okay to buy produce from open bins, um, even if other people are touching it. Um, so this virus, once it, a virus uh, requires a host cell in order to replicate itself. So once the virus leaves a host body, um, say in the form of a sneeze um, or a cough, um, it's not going to grow in number the way, say, a bacteria could or a fungus could. Um, a, bacteria, a virus is going to, once, once it comes out of your body, that's the most virus that's ever going to be in that load. And from there, it's going to steadily decrease. Um, it's also going to go through a bunch of sort of dilution events, which is when you, t so if it's on, say, an apple, um, and you have a certain amount of viral load on that apple and then a bunch of people touch that apple, well, every person has gotten a little bit of virus on their hand, which means that there is now a little bit less virus on that apple. Um, and it's now spread out over more surfaces. Um, it's going to break down faster. Um, so, and all those people are probably gonna wash their hands, hopefully. So really the odds of contracting the virus um, just by touching raw produce, even produce that other people have touched, um, are very, very slim, um, especially if you practice good hygiene, um, wash your fruits and vegetables when you get them home, um, wash your hands before you touch your face or before you prepare and cook food, um, you should be safe. Is it safer to order takeout, delivery, or to shop at the supermarket? All three methods are actually relatively safe. Um, again, the thing you want to really look out for is proximity to other people. So at the supermarket, go during off-peak hours and avoid other people. Um, if you're going to get takeout, try and order from a restaurant that's offers, that offers contact-free takeout. That is where they would leave the food on a table, step back, allow you to come forward and pick it up. Um, and if you're going to get delivery, the same thing. Um, ask the delivery driver to leave it on your doorstep, step away. Then you go out and pick up the food and bring it into your house. Um, you want to avoid proximity to other people as much as possible. Can I get it from eating Chinese food or imported goods from other countries? The answer is you're not any more likely to get it from Chinese goods or uh, imported goods than you are from anything at the supermarket or at any other restaurant. Um, the disease did originate in China, uh, but it spread person to person, um, which is why um, health organizations and governments have been limiting the movement of people, but not the movement of goods. Um, we don't really know of any cases where it's been uh, transferred via goods, especially um, things that are that are imported goods like food that are going to be in shipment for, you know, several, at least days, weeks, um, sometimes even months. Um, in that amount of time, there's not going to be any virus left by the time it gets to its point of, des uh, point of destination. Um, so with imported goods, you're actually more likely to get, um, you know, it's more likely to be infected by the person stocking the supermarket shelf um, or the person unloading the truck than it is um, at its point of origin. So the answer is no, there is no higher risk associated uh, with imported food um, or Chinese restaurants or any other type of restaurant. So in summary, I want to reiterate that uh, this is a novel virus, so there's a lot we don't know about it. Um, that said, we do know that it's spread primarily through droplet inha inhalation. Um, and we also know that thus far, um, there have been no known cases of uh, food-related transmission. Um, and that's the agreement of every health or organization around the world um, and every expert that I've spoken to. So while it is theoretically possible that you can get it uh, through eating food or through handling food, um, the odds of that at this point are quite, quite slim. Um, so you can feel good about cooking at home or even ordering takeout from restaurants. So what can you do to help? The best way to help is to keep yourself healthy and to keep your community healthy, and that means social distancing. So keep yourself at home as much as you can. If you do need to go out, um, avoid crowds, avoid other people, um, do all your shopping in three to four work batches, um, sorry, three to four week batches, uh, so that you don't have to frequently go to the supermarket, um, and just stay healthy, clean, uh, and safe, and that's good protection for you and for your community. Um, if you wanna help beyond that, I would uh, really suggest looking towards local organizations um, that are, 
helping with coronavirus rel coronavirus relief. Um, I know that in my my community in the Bay Area, there's a number of organizations that have sprung up since the outbreak started. Um, in fact, my own restaurant, we are um, providing free meals to first responders, uh, firemen, um, emergency emergency room workers, um, as well as uh, people in the community who need food um, because they're out of work or because their children are out of school. Um, there are lots of people doing good work out there. Um, I urge you to look into that, see how you can help. Um, if nobody's doing anything around you, start your own initiative if you can. Um, you know, we're all just doing the best we can right here, um, right now. Uh, and I hope that you stay safe. Uh, and I hope that you keep eating good food despite what's going on right now. Thank you.